Hey, insurance phone calls are tough. Nobody wants to pick up the phone. Everybody struggles to do this. And I'm going to show you how to nail the first 30 seconds of an insurance phone call right now. There's several mistakes that you're probably making right now. You don't even know that you're making them. Because I used to make, a decade ago, when I started selling insurance, I made 117K in my first eight months. I made a ton of mistakes. I still made 100 grand my first year. However, I made a lot of mistakes that I didn't have to make that I'm going to share with you because you're making the mistakes right now. And if you stop watching this video right now, you're going to keep making the same mistakes. But if you keep watching, you will learn the mistakes you're making and how to not make them anymore and why the first 30 seconds are extremely important and how you can nail the first 30 seconds right away. One of the first things that insurance agents don't even realize is 30 seconds is good, but let's think about how literally the first four to five seconds is actually the most crucial and important part of a call. You have to nail that initial piece because what you need to do, what you need to think about is being in full control right out of the get-go. Those first four and a half seconds, I need to be in control. First four and a half seconds, I gotta be in control. First four and a half seconds, I gotta be ready. They gotta be, they gotta be listening to me, right? You, people's attention spans are shorter than they ever used to be. Harvard Business Review says four to five seconds. You gotta nail the first four and a half seconds. Jordan Belfort, he's speaking to 8% Nation, says, Five seconds. Harvard said four seconds. Whatever. First four, five seconds are crucial. And there's primary mistakes that you are making right now that you need to stop making. All right. And the number one primary mistake that insurance agents are making is literally the, the, the first words that they are saying in the intro. A lot of agents have a really bad habit. Uh, and I used to have it too. All right, so I'm not just I'm not I'm not I'm not, I'm not I'm not just talking about you right now. I'm talking about myself as well. Most of us are trained when we make a sales call to say, "Is this hello? Is this Betty?" Or, "Hello, are you Betty?" Or, "Hello, I'm looking for Betty." No more. Can't do that anymore. You don't you don't ask them. Great salespeople ask questions, but great salespeople tell them things instead of ask. So think about this, right? Instead of, is this, say, hello, Betty, right? It, 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 it's more aggressive, it's more confident, it's a better approach, and you will end up getting a better response. Because think about this, who's ever, had someone call them, let's just say, I mean, I, you know, I get calls from Sirius XM all the time because I've owned 42,000 vehicles, right? That's my fault, I guess. But I'll get calls from them and they'll say, is this Cody? Eh, stupid. I, I used to make the same mistake too. Now, and a lot of times I'll say, you know what? Who's ever, you got the wrong number. Has that ever happened to you where someone's called and you're like, ah, no, 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 you got the wrong number. This isn't me, but it's really you. All right now, prospects for insurance will do the same thing if you don't call them out. Is this Betty? Which one sounds better? Hello, is this Betty? Hello, Betty. Right? Which one's more confident? Which one gets more control? Which one's less likely to get lied to? Which one is more aggressive? That's why the intro needs to be nailed. That's the first thing, right? That's important. The second thing is, I only say. I only say my first name, so no last name and no company name. You say, well, dude, that's 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 weird, right? Well, it's, dude, it's weird that you guys do it. You know, I used to make the same mistake. Most people don't know this. When I started as an intern at 19 years old, I was calling for a veteran agent out of the phone book, literally flipping through the phone book, and, oh, that looks good. Let's call that person. And I would pick up the phone and I would make those calls and I would literally cold call. And what I didn't realize back then is I was making some bad mistakes and I wasn't nailing the first 30 seconds. And I would be like, you know, hey, this is Cody Askins with Mutual of Omaha back then. And it gave people a chance to interject, to take control, to jump in. And they would end up saying, you know what? Who is this? Or why are you calling me? Or I didn't ask you to call me. Or I'm not interested. It gave them a chance to interject. When they interject, when they throw an objection early in the call, you lose control. So the first 30 seconds 
is all about literally not allowing objections to come up. All right, so, hello, Betty. Then, this is Cody. That's it, right? Instead of, it says Cody Askins with, you know, the secure insurance company, right? It's, no, first name, that's it, right? That's tip number two. The third one is, the, 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 and this, is, this is continues the first 30 seconds. There's a powerful phrase that I love that is either I'm or were, if you've got a phone center calling for you, I'm getting back to you. Powerful. Not, because most people have a bad habit of saying, this is, this is the example of a bad wrong call. Hello, hello, is this Betty? Uh, this is Cody Askins with Secure Insurance Company. Um, you fill out a form saying you wanted to buy life insurance, and then we pause. Those first 30 seconds, you are begging for an objection. It's not going well. It's, I promise you, they're going to give you an objection. They're going to say, I'm not, not interested. They're going to hang up. They're going to move on. When really, you should have done something different. And when they, and most agents, and, and, and so a lot of you watching right now, you're going to call a lead. And you know pr probably you're going to get the lead from us because we do hundreds of thousands of leads a month now. And you're going to get the lead from us. And, and you're going to call in. And they're going to say, oh, I'm not interested. And, and you're going to blame the vendor. You're going to blame the lead. When in reality... When I don't have success with something, I, 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 who do you think I blame first? I blame myself, All right? So I'm getting back to you. And you could say, maybe you could say, hello, Betty, this is Cody. I'm getting back to you about your request, your request for the new blank information. And then, and then, then I want to confirm some data. Most people are still missing this piece right here. Super important, super valuable, and most people are missing this. I want to confirm some data, all right? I'm getting back to you about your request for the new blank information, right? New Medicare information, whatever. Then confirm data. Looks like you, you, you said your favorite hobby is fishing. I'm assuming that you remember that, right? Does that sound better than, well, did you put your favorite hobby is fishing? Why would you ask them? You know that that is what they put. Or you entered your date of birth as this, right? That, that, I'm assuming you remember doing that, don't you? You notice how I'm ending the question more assumptively, more aggressively, and, and controlling the answer that I get. I'm controlling, I'm getting a yes. I'm not getting a no, you know? It's rare that I get a no. Most people can, they, 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 they we're used to like, talking for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, puking on people, vomiting, and we're not used to confirming data. Data needs to be confirmed because it's easy to say, well, you filled out this and you did this and, you know, you know, are you interested? Instead, I'm getting back to you about your request for the new blank information. Then we get confirmed some data. You know, it looks like here your favorite hobby is fishing. Thank you for doing that. Hey, I'm assuming that you remember that, don't you? Well, yeah, they do remember. You know, okay, so confirm some data. That's important to let them know who you are. It's a it's a trust thing at that point. It grabs, it lets them know, hey, I know who you are from the get-go. I have your information. I'm getting back to you. You gave me your info. You gave me this piece of data, and you remember doing that, don't you? It's a different phone call, right? It really, really is. And then, then you have to, you have to move into being the authority. The reason people struggle with the phone call is they lose control because they don't come across as the expert, they don't come across as they have authority, and people want to talk to someone with authority, all right? Confirm data, and then, right? So let me roll through it again. Hello, Betty. Hey, this is Cody, getting back to you about your request for the new blank information. You entered your favorite hobby as fishing. I'm assuming you remember doing that, don't you? Yeah, I do. You know. Okay, good. Excellent. Well, hey, I'm the local field underwriter. I'll be out in your area on uh, Friday. Should I drop this off in the morning or in the afternoon? Which is better for you? That's the authority and the question. And that's that's the close. That's the well, most agents say, well, what do you, like, most agents will overcomplicate this. They'll think about everything. They'll say, well, I don't know what you're talking, like, they'll, they'll say, well, well, I don't what am I dropping off? Or, like, you know, well, what if, they, what if I get to the door? And most of the time when I get to the door, they forget I was ever dropping anything off anyway. The point is to get in front of them 
at all costs without lying, right? So, and you could drop something off. You could drop you off. You could drop information off. You could drop yourself off for an hour. You could drop off a business card. You could drop off a quote. You could drop off whatever, right? You're full of resources. Hello, Betty. This is Cody. Getting back to you about your request for the bl new blank information. You put into your favorite hobby is fishing. I'm assuming you remember doing that, right? Yes. Okay, great. I'm the local food underwriter. I've been assigned to help you. I'll be out in your area. Looks like Friday. Good. Should I drop this information off in the morning or in the afternoon? Which is better for you? Right? That's the authority. That's the closing. You're finishing with the question. So I want you to think about this. When you're making calls from now on, I want you to think, I got to nail the first 45 seconds and they're going to nail the first 30 seconds. This, all this, time it. It's within the first 30 seconds. It is. And this is important to nail the first 30 seconds of the insurance phone call. So you stop getting hung up on, so you stop getting, stop getting objections, and you start winning when you make calls. Hey, if you love this video and you want to know more about why insurance agents quit, why do they quit? It's right there. Go watch that video. It's an excellent video, and I'll see you there. 92% of people fell out of this business, which is insane. You believe there's four reasons why. You believe the first reason is a lack of training. Yes. Yes. Explain that.